Wi-Fi issues. That was very exciting. Oh, we do have someone here. Oh, well, welcome, Paul. How are you doing? I see that. <clears throat> you can see who's, who it, the people are, right? Yeah. If you have all the controls. OK, we should be live. Yeah, I see it. Sweet. I'm going to share my screen. Whoa, I've got a lot of screens. <laughs> Go with this one. Boom. Steve, how are we doing? We seen my screen? I It says it started, but I, ha I don't see anything yet. I see it now. Nice. What a treat. All right, folks, welcome. We will be getting started in about four minutes here. Gonna be having a spectacular sign. Steve Laurie said she's gonna be monitor monitoring our, our Facebook, our live, see if we get any questions from there. So Lori will be in attendance. So once again, best behavior. I appreciate the warnings. Of course, That's what I'm here for. You are too kind. I'm ready to take notes. Oh yeah. I think the uh, the a lot of people love the creative process of an agency, mm -hmm. designing stuff, building stuff, all that. I'm starting to think I like this work more than that. The webinar? The research and strategy. Oh, like the research and yeah, strategy. Yeah, the, the uncovering of the of uh, information and data and insight and how, how you use it. I hear you. But we'll save that for the webinar. Right. <laughs> sure will. <clears throat> Get started here in about three minutes. Need to make sure I record. So, Steve, if I forget, so I'm not recording when I start talking, make sure someone yells at me. Take questions wherever you send them, Spencer. Mm -hmm. I think. I'm kidding. I'm ready. <laughs> I know. I know it's dude. I got full faith. Lori, if you're if you're on Facebook, let us know if we're coming through. All right, please and thank you. See what she says. I got to turn my Slack notifications off. <laughs> She's messaging me. Facebook, and we are all good. Thank you, Lori. So far, the internet is being kind to us. Sure is. All right, folks. Well, got one minute to go. About to get started. So, if you are in attendance and you want to shoot us where you're coming from today, where you're watching from, that'd be appreciated. Steve, where are you coming to us from today? I'm in sunny Greendale, Wisconsin. What a beautiful spot. And I am from, I'm at Keystone Click headquarters. Steve was here earlier in the day, but had to head home to take care of other duties, but now he's back for the webinar. You're at the Global HQ. 
I am at the Global HQ. Steve's are at the Glendale HQ. I'm at the remote HQ in, Glen in Greendale. Greendale. Apologies. Sure, it's a sensitive subject, but oh, <laughs> the clock has hit one. So why don't we go ahead and get started? So folks, welcome to the first episode in our marketing research and strategy um, webinar series. And today we'll be covering the fundamentals of research to try to really give you that baseline of those building blocks that we're going to build off later in the series. Um, before we get started, a little bit about Keystone Click and then about ourselves. Keystone Click is a strategic digital marketing agency and we really help our clients build brand awareness and generate leads online by conducting research and collecting insights that allow us to build a plan or a strategy that is focused on the goals of our clients. And um, I'm Spencer Bard. I am the sales and marketing coordinator at Keystone Click. And today I'm joined by Steve Glenn. Steve, tell Spencer. us about yourself. Yeah, thanks. Uh, I feel very um, uh, like informed here with all my notes and ready to take notes and ready to watch all this information. But yes, it's a pleasure to be here. I'm Steve Glenn. Uh, I believe it's senior account strategist or something like that here at Keystone Click. Basically, I, I assist Sp Spencer in the things he uh, wants to accomplish and uh, also work with our clients on research and strategy and creative and web and digital and all of that. So I'm um, excited to be here today. Yep. And today's Steve, I don't know if you want me to tell these people this, but this is Steve's first webinar. So be nice to him, folks. I'm so nervous because of that. Thanks. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm excited to have some fun today. All right, let's get started. So a little bit of agenda before we get started. And you know, if I'm part of the webinar, there are going to be a few memes here and there. So we're going to take a look at the importance of research and then really go into some exercise that you can build off of for knowing your own company, knowing yourself, then getting into knowing your customers, then knowing your competition, because in order to know your competition, you need to get to, you get to find out where those opportunities are. Um, knowing how to, to find out where people are finding you online and then um, some of those building blocks for getting started with that strategy. Yeah, and Spence, I just want to add here, mm -hmm. I am by no means a research and strategy expert, but what I am is an experimenter. And I think if we can all take that perspective for this webinar and going forward, that we're, we're looking for ways to experiment, to learn, to gather insights and make better decisions, we'll be better off. And I, and Spencer, it's always a good day to be talking about how companies can learn more about themselves, their customers, and their competition. So, yes. Yeah. Without a doubt, Steve. Love that. Um, then, quick, we'll get started. So, why is research, why is research important? Why can't we create strategy without the research? So, getting into that, whoops, got that slide. So, Research comprises creative and systematic work to, uh, undertaken to increase the stock of knowledge, including knowledge of humans, culture, society, and use of the stock of knowledge to devise new applications. And I really like the quote on the right from Benjamin Franklin, by failing to prepare, you are preparing to fail. And that really goes true with research and strategy. You can't just start throwing darts in the dark when it comes to your marketing strategy. With, without the research, you don't know where your customers are. You don't know what's going to resonate with, with them. So you really got to prepare to win so that when you are do are, are ready to create that strategy, you'll feel comfortable with your plan of attack that will really reach them and prepare to grow your business. Yeah, and quite frankly, things are just changing so quickly that um, you've got to stay on top of this work as well. No doubt. So getting to know yourself. Um, so the first activity that we like to do here at Keystone Click with all of our clients is an XYZ statement. And once again, a meme on the right, but at, in terms of the X, that is we, that's what we do, your product, your service, um, Y for Y, your customer profile, we do X for Y and then the Z, so they can Z, which is the result, so they can have success online, so they can do really anything they're looking for. So. Um, Really the big benefit for this is one of the biggest struggles that you see any business um, with businesses is that they're not able to define what makes themselves different from their competitors. Any lack of distinction allows that their prospects to turn to a competitor um, because they believe that you're gonna offer the same thing. And what this activity really allows you to do is create that distinction that allows customers to, it allows you to create that statement that's compelling, that drives uh, loyalty 
and it'll produce a statement that showcases your distinction and in turn better than your competitors. So let's take a look at an example from us at Keystone Click. So the X, we craft end user friendly websites and digital marketing plans. That's the X, that's what we do. Um, why for web lacking B2B industrial manufacturers, that's one of the main target audiences we serve, then Z. So they can embrace the digital tools needed to succeed online. So that's an example of our um, XYZ statement for one of our target audiences. And Spencer, I just wanna emphasize what you were saying because this goes beyond the what. I think a lot of us have an easier time with the what and when we get into why and how and for whom and, and the benefits that it offers our uh, target customers and, and even why we're better, um, that, that really takes us quite a few steps uh, forward. Without a doubt, Steve, I appreciate that. And then, so another activity to really get you thinking about yourself. So the Lotus Blossom exercises really helps you peel back that onion in terms of answering those questions that your audience, that your audience asks you. So the way it works is that in this middle box, you're going to answer that main overarching question that people ask you about your business, about what you do. So in every little box around that, you're going to ask another question that people may ask you in relation to um, the main question. So someone asks you, what questions do people off? Well, well, the main question is what people do questions off, uh, people often ask you. And then the core questions that people ask you are going to be surrounding this. So one of these for us may be, um, how do you help manufacturers claim their presence online? And then what you do with that is you take that question from the internal questions box and you add it to the one of the external quadrants. And then from there, you're going to ask more questions in relation to that question. And then by the time you finish all of that, you should have a bunch of questions you're able to add, ask to yourself that you're able to there, there and answer. Um, and it really helps you peel back the onion that, because the better you're able to answer all these questions, the better you're going to be able to position yourself online as a whole. Yeah, and I think what I love about this, and I, my kids use it on me all the time, but um, what I really love about this exercise is it gets us beyond the surface questions. Mm -hmm. And a lot of companies or, or leaders stop at the first one or two questions and, and move on when we really dig more deeply into five, six, seven, ten 10 questions and, and asking why over and over again, um, that can be really helpful to informing strategy. Yeah, and I mean, Steve, you, you have kids. I'm sure you just hear kids asking you why, why can't we go to the playground because it's late, why? And that really helps you, that real life example of that. But um, in all honesty, it really helps you <laughs> yeah. understand that, that, that ideal client's well, understand a bit more about yourself. Mm -hmm. and it allows you to better attract that ideal client. Absolutely. Um, moving on. Where can I click? There we go. So we're going to be defining our goals. So at Keystone Click, we really like to focus on what we call SMART goals, so strategic. They need to have a strategy associated with them. They need to be measurable and they need to be realistic. And that's where the attainable comes in. Uh, they need to be realistic, but they also need to be um, relevant. They can't just be goals that um, won't benefit your business. So, and then they need to be time bound. So you need to have a set period of time that you're going to accomplish these goals. Um, so you really, before you start any type of research um, for your market, you want to make sure that you define these SMART goals up front. Yeah, first of all, I think I'm surprised that you don't have a meme for this slide, but uh, yeah. I like the brain, but that's good. But uh, Spence, I, I think um, you, I've, I use this, I totally stole this, this line, but I use it now regularly. Although in, in debates around measurement, um, you, you do have to be careful in how you set up these things in a smart way to also um, encourage the right behaviors. And, but th this is the line I stole. Don't expect what you don't inspect. Mm. So to be able to set these, uh, these uh, goals up properly um, can be very helpful to, to know what's working, what's not, what do you throw away, what do you, what do you double down on, and even more. Love that. And then we'll take a quick look at an example. So increase revenue by 15%. So that's got the 
measurable, but then you need to add that to, you know, the time bound by when, um, where, how do you want to reach this? So when you really get those smart goals, you're able to create that what you need to figure out to attain, which the, from there you can define that strategy to attain those goals. Love it. So then getting to know yourself from um, your website perspective, a technical audit. So these can be any type of, let's say the coding, you need to know the coding on your back end. is everything functioning properly? Is your site, um, are there any technical issues stopping search engine, engines from finding your site? Um, are there any, is your site secure? Um, really understanding the back end of your site really helps you understand the user experience of your site, which is next. So in terms of user experience, can, does your website allow users to know what steps they want to take next? You know, we have a little test we like to do at Keystone Click called the billboard test. And it really has to do with site users when they come to your home screen, it's like a billboard. You see it for a few seconds, then you decide if you want to stay or leave. So when you get to someone's website, you really want to know where you want to go, where you want, you need to show them where they want, where you want them to go next. Sorry, I got a little bit of a tongue twister there, but, um, and then from more getting more in depth with that, you really want to make sure that all your buttons are working properly, all your, all your call to actions and that every, every call to action is taking your user where they want to go. Mm -hmm. And um, I think, Spencer, it's um, it's important to in in uh, to think of this in in this maybe this scope. But mm -hmm. how how easy is it for potential customers to find you? And then once they do, how quickly do they understand what you do and how you can help? And what I love about Keystone uh, in the in these types of projects is the approach. And I mean, they're first of all, Keystone is just scary good at at breaking this stuff down but it's not just handing you a list of issues. It's handing you a list of ideas on how you can make improvements or how you can uh, create a better user experience, um, what you can do to actually attack some of these challenges that, that are found and, uh, and, and not you know, big giant scope items, but uh, also the low hanging fruit, the things that are really easy to knock off quickly and make some traction. Yep, without a doubt. And then last but not least, you want to make sure that the content on your website aligns with what users are searching for. So if someone goes is searching for a specific um and me or uh something they need for a problem and they get to your website and it doesn't, your content doesn't speak to that problem and how you solve it, um, they're not gonna stay on your site. So really making sure that you that your website is speaking to the problems that you solve. So I get so excited, I just jump in like random times. <laughs> no doubt. So then in terms of messaging, so you want to identify all the places that you reach out to your customers and evaluate your message. So the thing that is most crucial is, are you, are you frequently in, are you in constant communication with your um, customer, with your ideal audience or ideal customers? So are you constantly sending out emails? Are you staying in consistent contact on social media by um, posting consistently? Are you dry? Are you releasing or publishing blogs consistently on your site? Um, then um, is your messaging consistent? Do you have the same feel? Do you have the same vibes, I guess? Um, and that needs to be um, consistent across all uh, channels as well. And then you need to make sure that your message is consistent with your goals and that really comes down to making sure that your message stays in alignment with what you are trying to, with what your conversions are or internally. If you're trying to have people, if you're trying to sell, in our case, websites, you want to make sure that all of your content is not promoting your website, but either promoting value or um, giving, put, put, putting back value or just um, really in the messaging. I think this is... Um particularly important for business leaders who are looking at their organization on a day-to-day -day basis and, and working uh, head down on the business. And so I know I've in past companies and projects, I've been guilty of just letting this stuff lag. And to me, having dedicated resources or a partner you trust to help you stay on top, uh, stay consistent, have a good cadence, all of those things are critically important because when you go away, then your customers go away. No doubt, good point, Steve. 
Um, then it comes down to getting to know your target customer. I mean, getting to know your clients uh, helps you better understand what motivates them, um, what content they enjoy, how to best reach them, where they are online. Find that's crucial. And then uh, that really helps you understand how to best reach them and it helps you understand their perspective. So a really beneficial way to get to know your customer is to have a third party interview your uh, ideal customer, your current clients, because the reason why it's important to do third party versus um, yourself is because the way that they're going to answer questions to a third party is going to be different than the way they answer questions from you. So really the questions that you want to know are, how are they? How did they find you? Where did they find you online? Um, why did they bought from you? What was that differentiating factor that allowed that had them go with you versus your competitors? Why do they keep buying with you? What has that relationship been like? That uh, what helps them maintain the relationship? Um, what pain are you solving for them? How does your product or service solve a problem for them? Um, do they are they referring business to you? Why or why not? Because if all the other answers to those questions have been positive and the relationship has been steady, why, why aren't they referring business to you? Um, who are they trying to impress? And that goes back to their target audience. Um, who are they trying to impress with what um, they do? Um, who influences their buying decisions? Just because that gives you an idea of uh, people throughout your target industry, who is making that buying decision throughout the entire industry and where are they getting their uh, information online? That gives you a better idea of where you can find your target audience online. Because for most of these industries, a lot of the answers are gonna be similar. Um, Steve, I assume you got some stuff to add to that. You know it, you know it, buddy, I do. And, and uh, this is what I'll add. Uh, do they refer you business? Um, you, great points you made there. And I'll also add that um, sometimes it could be as simple as the fact that you have not asked. And so you um, highly encourage that double down on third party uh, in this process because of all the reasons you mentioned Spencer, but also we carry our own bias when we're talking to our customers and we don't have the same kind of uh, newness or curiosity that a third party often brings to the table. So those are key things to, to consider when you're um, thinking about interviewing or getting to know your customers a little bit better. Definitely. So um, getting to know your customer, you really want to, this, this slide kind of goes into that customer experience, um, just general overall, yeah, customer experience. So how, many businesses, they don't take the time to see how their websites or customer experience is functioning. They just, and when it comes to a contact form, they'll put it on their website, they'll leave it there and they won't, they won't check to make sure it's working. Like when someone fills out the form, is it taking to them to where they want to go? Um, are there calls to actions are working? Um, basically, is, is every part of the customer experience on your website functioning properly? Um, call into the office, see how your, see how your agents or your um, employees are treating customers. Are they treating them with the same respect um, and message that you want to be portraying? Um, sign up for a newsletter. What, what happens when people do that? Um, in our case, webinar, our, our owner can be uh, visiting us and seeing how we're doing, see if we're portraying the message that we want to be portraying right now. But um, ensuring that each of these conversations or contact points are functioning properly is just extremely important because things can break and the experience can be ruined. So it's really important to make sure that all the contact methods with your clients are functioning to the top of either your ability or website's ability. Yeah, and, and really what we're getting at is empathy, right? Empathy for your customer and, and the companies that I've seen uh, who have high empathy obsess over making their customers happy and happy customers buy more, stick around longer and send you more business. That's right. Got to keep the customers happy. So right now we're going to kind of look into how you can create that customer persona that you want to be created. So you want to really get to know who is your customer and um, why, and I mean, you want someone that they love to buy from and you want people who they love to sell to. So you want to take a few moments to think about who is that ideal customer for you that you love to sell to, that you want to sell to more. You want to think of their challenges, their goals, 
um, what, what they like to see, what promises you can deliver, how you interact with them, how will that uh, affect a sale. And then you want to give them a face, a name, and a personality and go a bit um, in depth with that. And we'll be taking a look at some of the questions you can answer in the next slide. Yeah, I love that uh, we went from talking about happy customers to happy business owners and leaders. Like this is exactly. this is your chance to create a happy business environment. You know, when mm -hmm. you really start to define who it is you want to sell to and why and, and what they do, how they think, what motivates them, who they're, some of the previous content, who they're trying to impress, all their stakeholders that are in the process, really diving deep into this to get a clear picture because then all the other stuff starts to make sense as well. The communication channels and messages and all of that is just, this is really a, an important exercise to get to know uh, where you're gonna go with things. Yep, yeah, without a doubt. Um, moving on here. So when we're thinking about our ideal customer, we're gonna get into some of, their, some of these questions we can ask. So what are their emotional fears or worries? What are they worried about? What's gonna stop them from um, continuing, from starting a relationship with you? What's gonna stop them from a partnership? What are their dreams and aspirations? What are their goals? What, what is their dream? What can you offer them that will help them um, achieve their dream? What's their goals for their business? What are their pain points? When you can identify their pain points, you can better speak to how your solution solves those pains. Um, what are their values? What do they value in a partnership? What do they value in their business? Um, who do they want to impress most? Once again, this goes into their target audience. Why? Who do they want to imp impress? Getting to know their target audience better. Um, what, if, what frustrates them most about your industry? Now, this is a big one. Like, what frustrates them most with the other um, businesses in your industry that they've worked with? And how can you speak to that? And how can you um, show that you're going to change that um, opinion of the industry? And really speak to how you um, will change that impression. Um, what do they want from you? I mean, pretty straightforward. Um, what's one thing that you could guarantee that they would pay a premium now? Could you guarantee that they'd get more conversions? Could you guarantee that they'd, um, just, um, Steve, I came, I, I came to a loss here. Do you have anything right here? Well, I think the, the, I love this question, first of all, and here's why it really gets into value versus just transactional items, right? So like, what is the thing you could offer your customer that they would just not even think twice about paying you what you're asking for it. Yep. And then last but not least, you will gain my trust and my comfort by doing what? And this is the big thing when it comes to any relationship is that we want to have that trust between the buyer and the seller just to really create that relationship. And that can be one of the most important aspects between either getting a sale or not getting a sale and starting that relationship. Yeah. I don't know if you have any ma other magic bullets coming out uh, here. I don't. That was the last one. All right. All right. So I'll, I'll say this, and this is really where you have me thinking, Spencer, after uh, walking uh, all of us through this. It's not about what you're selling. It's about them and the problem you're solving. Really, you know, yes, of course, the thing you're selling matters, but really you're digging into the customer here and what are their problems and you're working toward those solutions. No doubt. Um, so that brings us to kind of example of uh, what a customer persona looks like. So you give them a name, you give them a face, and this not only helps you get to know them better, but it also helps you interact with potential clients that fit this persona well. Um, so you give them a bio, um, which includes some of their challenge challenges, how they interact, what kind of company it typically is. Um, their goals, frustrations, and then any tactics you can use to really kind of grab their attention or gain that trust to start that relationship. Um, it's incredibly important to understand your customer before you start selling them or start selling to them. Yep. And this can take time because, you know, we've talked about a lot of steps to get here, but I'll tell you this, it, it then saves you so much time and effort and mental energy because now you know who you're targeting and you know who you can say no to because they don't fit the profile. 
Right. And for a lot of companies, they'll have multiple uh, different ideal customers for a different product or service. So mm -hmm. if you make one of these for each of your clients, you'll have a better understanding of who you're looking for for each aspect of your business. And that gets us to the fun part, knowing your competition. And so, I mean, right then. yeah, we've heard before, um, don't worry about what the competitors are doing, but realistically, you want to know what your competitors are doing. And if you are taking advantage of all the opportunities you can um, physically uh, take advantage of. So when you're looking at your competition, you want to identify what they're doing online and identify those weaknesses that they have. Um, so then, so then those can turn into opportunity for your business. So um, you really want to survey your competitive landscape and that will allow you to choose the best digital marketing platforms, which will allow you to succeed. So some of these questions that or some of these strategies for that can be identifying three to five competitors. And to do that, I would look at competition that you've heard that you've known you've lost business for mm -hmm. uh, to, I would look at competitors that you hear potential clients are also talking to. I would look at um, just general uh, businesses or competition that you see very active on social media platforms. And most businesses have a good idea and can usually identify those three to five competitors. But asking those questions, where are they online? What channels are they spending the most time and energy on? Um, what, are they, what are they saying? What's their messaging like? What are they promoting? Are they providing value or are they trying to promote a product? What are they doing? What are they saying? Um, what types of content are they publishing that people are engaging with? Like what, what's their best form of content? Is it videos or is it infographics? What, and that gives you an idea of what your, not only what your competition is doing, but also what your target audience likes to see in turn from an online basis. Um, how do they show up on search engines? Um, how is their search engine optimization? Are they, are they showing up when, they're, when you, your keywords are being searched and how do they rank compared to you? And then are they investing into any paid ads? You can, um, we'll go over some tools that you can use to see um, if they're using any paid ads in a second, but if they are and they're getting good conversions with them, it might be something to look into. Yeah, and I love this. I mean, this process is so intriguing uh, when, when you start. It's like uh, being a detective almost, you know, and, um, you know, Keystone works with a number of clients across a number, number different sizes, across uh, different industries. I really um, appreciate what I've seen when we're working with small and medium-sized companies who look, uh, who tend to look regionally for at their mm -hmm. competitors until mm -hmm. we start digging in and we start to bring them competitors who are in their space that maybe they haven't considered. And it really can impact and inform the thinking around then how they react and respond. Yeah, definitely. A lot of times the smaller businesses, they only think that they're competing with other small businesses in the area until they realize that they're competing with this giant uh, national uh, multinational corporation that they had no idea they were even in competition losing potential right. customers for you. Right. So that's definitely something that to take into account. But by doing this, you can really find those opportunities that they might be missing that you can take advantage of. So at least identifying some of these competent our competitors and running through some of these questions are going to be an eff extremely effective way so um here's some some yeah excuse me some services or tools that you can use and there are paid versions for each but a lot of these are spy foo semrush these are going to be kind of tools that look at your seo um see so where you're ranking keywords um SpyFu can look at paid ads, but SEMrush, you could really see how you compare to your competition in terms of keywords, how you've been um, um, doing lately in terms of ranking adjustments, if you have any new keywords. Um, Moz really takes a look at what types of ads they're running. WooRank's another website that um, really anal analyzes um, your keywords. And also from a website standpoint, takes a look at how everything's functioning from a technical standpoint. Mm -hmm. um, and that would be more of a crawler that analyzes website strength and weaknesses. Yeah, and, and here's just some more keystone advice for you. Definitely, if you're not engaged with a digital agency, check these tools out because they can they provide so much content for free and advice and guidance and tips and tricks. And then their tools, uh, as you mentioned, Spencer, have 
free access levels for most of these, if not all. That like, mm -hmm. gives you a little bit of insight or get, gives you a little bit of chance to test them out, test drive it, and then decide if you want to pay for the full powered version. Um, but uh, the other thing is if you do have a digital agency, still I would recommend poking around in some of these tools because it they these tools will uh, help you ask better questions, verify and validate what your agencies are doing, mm -hmm. try to you know uh, understand better um, how you can maximize your relationship with that agency. And we're, we are very transparent with our clients and sharing what we learn and where we're finding it and, and empowering our clients to be um, smart digital marketers as well. Yep, without a doubt. And these, these tools are really just there for you to identify where your opportunities are and just playing around with them. You'll be able to find some of these, some of these areas where it's a hmm moment. You're like, I didn't know that uh, they aren't doing this and that maybe this is an opportunity we could be taking advantage of. But yeah, so highly recommend using some of these tools. And um, if you don't remember all of them, the recording is going to be sent. So no worries about that. Um, here's a little... Um, fun little activity it's fairly simple but basically it's with just analyzing you and your competitors kind of content you're putting out there so you're going to be looking at the content you're putting out and then kind of the engagement that you're getting if see what kind of facebook followers you're you're getting versus your competitors so same with linkedin uh, twitter instagram youtube see what kind of content is being put out and see if there's a bit of correlation between the type of content being posted or if you guys are, if one of your competitors has way more following on uh, Facebook, but you guys get about the same level of engagement, see if there's like a trend or see if there might be a uh, channel that works better. See if um, latest blog post has any impact, you know, it's just a good way to keep tabs and see where you could be taking a bit more advantage. Mm -hmm. And asking the why question again, why yep. are they there not in another place? What do you, what do they believe they know that we don't? And it just helps you, again, uh, sharpen the ax and just be smarter about what you're doing. No doubt. Um, so it comes up next, the fun part, know how people find you. You gotta be found online, so you gotta figure out how people are actually finding you. So, I mean, where you, it really helps to just take an audit of your channels to really see where you're putting out your messages. So what social media channels are you on? Are you publishing any white books? electric publication, electronic publications? Um, are you putting out newsletters? Um, how often are you releasing blogs on your website? And are you really, are you, do you have any email drips, email campaigns? And then really making sure that each of these channels is op optimized, meaning that the user experience as well, the message, that the messaging is consistent um, and that every channel is just really being maximized to increase that engagement. And then, but also to see where your competitor or what channels your competitors are using and how do they compare in terms of the traffic that they're receiving? Yeah, and I, I, so this area is so intriguing to me because I think two things. One, I think um, sometimes we might, in the world of text and IMs uh, across the apps we use, Maybe it feels like um, email doesn't work anymore, but definitely we see with clients that it, it works uh, in open rates and engagement. Um, and then, you know, sort of the other thing and, and a slight personal bend to this as well is let's get out of our comfort zones and let's go where our customers are. And, and you know, if you don't want to be on TikTok, uh, there's, there's a partner that will help you create that, uh, that um, presence there. And so um, I just know, I've seen it with other business owners and business leaders and in myself personally, that I, I will shy away from places I know where the customers are um, because of my own comfort or discomfort with it. And so I think that we really need to be open here to see what's gonna be the most effective. And then if we're not there, how do we get there with, uh, with ourselves or our partner? Definitely. Um, so then it's always good to take a look at your analytics and we're going to have a webinar all about measuring your goals, which I'm sure we'll get into a bit about a little bit deeper, but um, some of these tools that analytics are used, if you're, if you're not familiar with your analytics, I recommend going in there and playing around because it's very interesting. You can see where a lot of your users are coming from. Are they majority coming from 
organic search? Are they clicking your links in social? Um, what devices are they using? Are they primarily mobile? Are they primarily using um, laptops or desktops? Um, what does their behavior look like once they get to the site? You know, that's kind of what this picture down below displays. When, if you see that most website visits are ending with either them going to your landing page and then going to a different page that you don't want them to go to, it might be time to reevaluate kind of the calls to action or the navigation on your website because you really want your website to be going from the landing page and then going to your either call to action pages or, your, or the, really the pages that you want them to be finding. Um, and then just the last question is what type of content are you creating currently that your audience is connecting to? And that's another um, thing that you can see on your um, analytics is that you can see what types of blogs or website content that your audience is spending most time on. It's something that's really beneficial to know so you know how that you can create more of that. Mm -hmm. Agreed. And the graphic is so helpful here. Um, and it doesn't matter if you can't read it. What's important is to know that you do, there are tools available to give you this information yes. on your site. And, um, and, you know, Spencer, in addition to all the things you mentioned, which are so helpful, uh, you know, you can find, you can also find out where you're losing uh, potential customers. No and I just have to give a plug because Margie in our office is just, a, she just obsesses over these kinds of uh, analytics and data and uh, information and and I I see like the smile and excitement on her face when she can share with a client what's happening and not just what's happening but why it's happening because she uh, has all the data behind it. Yeah, no doubt, and I I can I can test that I definitely sit right pretty much right next to Margie, so I um, can hear her talking to herself, digging into everything sometimes. But when when she comes to that result, everything's everything's great. I think before she makes dinner, she checks Google Analytics every day. I think so. <laughs> I think she does that. Yeah, no doubt. No, once again, I mean, we touch on keyword research a lot, but we, uh, that's because we cannot stress it enough. You know, you got to look at how people are searching and you got to help them on their journey. So you can see below that the word cars when search gets 11 billion results. But then when you get a bit more specific with how people are searching, um, you get less and then so that's really what you want to look for when you're um, looking at your keywords you want people have a problem they're looking for a solution and you gotta look at what the keywords are that they're likely to lose so you want those search you want those areas of high opportunity for your keywords which are gonna be the high search volume but the lowest levels of difficulty or competition so in one of our upcoming webinars we're going to dig deeper into that but that's kind of a little bit of a uh, preview into that and every one of our clients, everyone, and this is not a judgment. This is just how it is. And I've done it too. Every one of our clients have come with a set of keywords that they believe customers are using to find them or their products and services. And when we dig in and we really jump in, into some of these analytical tools, we always find words, phrases, different ways that customers are really looking into your point, Spencer, what, what, what of those have the higher volume? Um, and so it, it and, and then the second thing we find is typically who's competing with you that you didn't know. Yes, without a doubt. And that, I mean, it all goes into research. There are so many different components. It's, it's crazy. I was just laughing at my, the dog picture I threw and I got distracted for a quick second, but yeah, I can't, I can't go a webinar without a dog picture. That's a, you have to do it. Exactly. So research shows. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so we're going to take a quick look, a uh, little quick journey into starting down the line on your strategy. Just a few, few quick slides before we um, end today. But the big thing is your digital marketing strategy is a series of actions that help you achieve your company's goals. These circled lines are the big points, but through carefully selected online marketing channels, and these channels can include paid, earned, and owned media, and can all be a common campaign and around a particular life of your business. So um, we break down even further, what is strategy? That's where we're going and how we're getting there. And it's, it's important 
because your goal is to show up. Sorry for skipping you there, Steve, if you had anything to say. It's okay. I'm just, I'm following. I'm here to assist you, my friend. Perfect. Yeah. Um, it's important because, you know, the, the process of, before engagement can be so long and your goal is to show up at every single one of these stages of buying um, for both consumer and B2B types of purchases. And really research is the only way that's going to allow you to access all these different areas that your clients or, or your ideal customers are hanging on the internet. And therefore you can show up at every single one of these. So they see you two, four, six, eight, ten 10 times. And finally it might be the 12th time, but they're like, I know I've seen this company providing value so much. I'm going to click. And that's really the goal of strategies to find, to keep showing up um, based on your research until you finally get that engagement to reel them in. And it's like, this is the culminating moment, right? This is mm -hmm. all the work has, has come to you and everything you know now plays out into your customer's journey or their purchase decision process. And how do you meet them at every stage with content or tools or help um, value more or less and, uh, and then ultimately that they choose you. For sure. And then um, one quick activity uh, before we end out, this is called strategy upgrade activity. And what it does it looks at, it look, really helps you track all the places your customers can opt in. So an opt in, I'll go, we'll, we'll take a look at some of ours, but really what you want to do for that this activity is you want to turn a piece of paper or anything into quadrants and on top of each, each quadrant, you're on the left, you're going to write opt-ins, middle transitional moments, and right uh, qualifications. So when we first look at opt-ins, these can be any place that people opt in to your our contact list or are, it's kind of looking at conversion. So for us, webinars, a Calendly meeting link, uh, one of our white papers, um, so, uh, website, any contact form, any podcast sign up to be a guest, um, and then any yeah, really any other type of form or conversion. And then we're gonna look at these transitional moments and what the transitional moments really take a look at is going to be those moments where um, they can either they turn from being a potential customer to an opt-in. So these can be either live chat on a website or they decide to be a guest on a podcast. They join a Facebook group where you're at. Um, they just, they finally attend a webinar. So they opt into the webinar and then the transitional moment is they attend that webinar. Then they fill out a, or they fill out a website form and then they participate in a discovery call. And these transitional moments really bring them from opting into being a qualified or being a qualified um, lead, perhaps mm -hmm. is one way to say it. And last but not least, you're going to look at your qualifications and then What's important about the qualifications is that these are your qualifications for the customers you want to work with. So these are the ideal clients you found in your research. And the big thing here is that a transition, if your transitional moment is not aligned with any of your qualifications, then it really does it really need to be a transitional moment. So that's the big thing there. Um, I recommend trying out this activity. We can send over some more information if you want after the webinar, but it's a great activity for really getting started on your research and just knowing all the areas that you're reaching potential clients. Um, yeah, just like right away I said here, um, if they attend a webinar, it's because it's B2B business and they're probably an established business. If they join one of our live Q and A's, it's because, well, we like them and they're probably one of our clients and they're probably in one of our target industries and so on and so forth. Um, so once again, if you have a transitional moment with no qualifications, it probably shouldn't be a transitional moment. And in summary, strong strategy definitely deserves a research foundation. So you want to take time to define yourself, know yourself and know your goals. And then you've really got to evaluate your current state. So that goes along with the defining yourself. You need to know what your current state is, how you compare to your, how you compare to your competitors. You need to understand your customers, build out those personas, ask those questions, have a third party interview your clients to really get to know them better and what resonates with them. Then know your competitors, know where they are online, know where, know where they're, know where they're taking advantage of that you're maybe not. And then identify your opt-ins, transitional moments, and qualifications. Then once again, a quote from Yogi Berra, know the all-star game just happened. If you don't know where you're going, you'll end up someplace else. So the point of research is to figure out where you want to go, and then the strategy is going to take you there.
And if it feels overwhelming at all, you have a friend in us. <laughs> sure do. We're happy to help. Yep. And then a few plugs before we end everything up. Um, coming up next in our research and strategy webinar series, we're going to take a look at some of competitive analysis and keyword research. That'll be July 29th at 1. Um, we're going to take a deep dive into content strategy. So now you've got some of that research done. How can you create that content strategy? It's going to reach your uh, target market. Um, that'll be August 12th. Then we're going to talk about measuring your marketing goals. So coming up with those KPMs, key performance measures, um, coming up with those SMART goals, defining success. That'll be August 26th. Um, then we have our ever popular cocktails and case studies, which um, Steve went over both. We both all participate in. We, we do love our cocktails. I will um, make uh, Manhattans in the office for this one. All right. Uh, you heard it first. Steve's calling a drink already. <laughs> but yeah, that'll be the ninth. And then I last but not least, expert panel discussion where we'll, we'll bring in some industry experts to talk. That'll be the 23rd. So if you're interested in signing up for some more webinars, head to keystoneclick.com slash webinars. And then we've got a little bit of an offer for our um, our webinar attendees today. We've got a marketing strategy session. So what's included is you're going to meet with Lori, get some one-on-one -on -one time with her, um, going to have Q&A with her. She's going to give you some strategies to work on. Um, really just expert level insight. So this will be a 39 session brought down to $99. So if you're interested, head to um, keystoneclick.com slash uh, marketing workshop. And I'll throw that in the chat here really quick. This is easily a 999 value yes. session that you're yes. going to get for 99. Yes, agreed. Um, so then last but not least, any questions? I were always available at any time and feel free to throw any questions in the chat. Um, I do see one from Lori from our face. Lori sent this one in from our Facebook live. The question is, where, what's the best place to start when conducting my research? Steve, what do you think? I think you obviously shared some great tools, mm -hmm. but um, if you don't want to learn or jump in or you're worried about the learning curve of, of using some kind of software platform, you can easily just start doing some searches yourself. And that's often where I start. I'll do some searches and see who's showing up. I'll check out the socials and I'll use that social matrix that Spencer shared earlier and start to see what my um, competitors are doing or not doing on the socials. I will go and sign up for their email newsletters. I will attend their events and, listen, and, and analyze as much of their messaging as possible. So there's lots of really easy low hanging fruit around research that you can jump into and monitor. Uh, Google alerts are really great and helpful to kind of keep up with what, what your competition is doing as well. Yeah, and I would say also knowing your goals and evaluating your current state. It's always easy. As, it's very easy to, to initially go um, straight to like getting to know your your ideal customer. But I think it's important to also get to know yourself. As get to well. know yourself, yeah. Um, then another question we've got is um, most challenging part of the process of research. What would you say to that, Steve? <sighs> That's a good one. I. Honestly, uh, I think being open to what the work tells you, um, removing that bias or the, the lens that you maybe see the world through from a business perspective, and just being open to what you act in, who your competitors are, what they're doing, what your customers are telling you they love about you or don't like about you. And just, uh, you know, seeing how you can make the best use of that kind of information. No doubt. And then um, one more, what are some other benefits to customer personas? I feel good about saying this one. Um, it just gives you ideas of like how to sell to people. Um, not only, it helps you get to know their goals. And also from a marketing automation perspective, um, if you have no people's personas, it allows you to create dynamic content and just really into individualizing every single experience for your um, ideal client. Comes down to people. Yep. No doubt. I'm going to check if we have any more questions. Doesn't look like it. All right, folks. Um, thank you so much for joining us. And we do hope you join us for our next webinar on the 29th about our competitive research, our competitive analysis and keyword research. Um, definitely reach out to Steve or I if you have any questions. Spencer, 
Bard at keystoneclick.com or steve.glynn at keystoneclick.com. Other than that, thank you guys very much for joining us. Yeah, and thank we'll, you. We'll be back soon. Spencer, thank you for all of your work in, in, uh, in your production of this whole uh, wonderful webinar. Steve, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't want to do it with anyone else. I love it. I can't wait for my next one.